ビデオ When I started Kyoto Video, not only did I want to shine a spotlight on past anime, but also shine a spotlight on the people who work behind the scenes. Making anime is a hard, thankless, and woefully underpaid profession, and as time goes on, the names of people behind classic anime and manga can and will fade from popular consciousness. You may have heard of people like Hayao Miyazaki or Hideaki Anno, but what about Shoji Kawamori, or Rintaro, or Toshio Okada, or Osamu Tezaki? or even Mamoru Oshii. Even if you recognize all the names I just listed, the average anime fan is going to be drawing blanks on at least half of those names. So today, I'd like to devote this video to one of my favorite figures of the medium, Kanichi Sanada. While primarily known nowadays for his manga work, Kanichi Sanada was a very noteworthy person in the 80s as a character designer. If you've watched anime from the late 80s, early 90s period, chances are you're familiar with Sanada's work. If you've seen Golf Wars or Gunsmith Cats or his most famous work, Bubblegum Crisis, one of the things that will stick out to you are the character designs, the lack of homogeneity, the attention to detail, and most notably, the way he designs female characters in a way that accentuates their attractiveness while still showing an element of strength and confidence. He wants you to know that these girls are going to kick your ass and look cute as hell while doing it. To me, Sonata's aesthetic defines this era of anime. The transition from the rounded thin line designs of the 1980s to the thick line angular style of the 1990s. Which is why for the day, I chose an anime that truly embodies who Kanichi Sonata is. All within a 45 minute runtime. Riding Bean is Kenichi Sonata's tribute to the lawless streets of Chicago and all its gun toting, high speed car chasing glory. It has its origins as a serialized manga in monthly comic Noisy, and was apparently quite popular. However, it was not popular enough to keep Monthly Comic Noisy afloat and ended alongside the magazine with only four chapters under its belt. While a lesser manga would have gotten lost to the sands of time, Riding Bean got a second chance. AIC and Artmic, who Sonata worked with on all his previous projects at that point, decided to do an OVA based on Riding Bean which would serve as a pilot for a potential anime. Since the OVA is meant to be seen as an introduction to the latent series, Riding Bean is a standalone story that is so simple it can be divided up into two halves. The first half, which sets up the plot, setting, and characters, and the second half, which is a massive climactic car chase and final confrontation. The story follows two anti-hero protagonists, the titular lantern jaw brick shithouse Bean Bandit, and business partner Rally Vincent. We'll get to that later, don't you worry. Anyways, Bean and Rally are... Couriers for hire, who guarantee the transport and delivery of anything or anyone in Chicago, including, but not limited to, armed robbers wanting to escape from the cops. This legal gray area of a job is done in Bean's Roadbuster, a fantastically customized sports car that almost reaches spy level movies of awesome with how many things it can do. The plot centers around Bean and Rally getting a job to escort Chelsea Grimwood, a recently kidnapped daughter of a wealthy department store owner, to her house in exchange for Bean's minimal fee of $45,000. However, things are not as simple as they seem for two reasons. One, Chelsea was last seen as a hostage in Bean's car by the police, no less, and they are finally eager to catch Bean now that they have probable cause. And two, Chelsea's father can't actually pay the fee because he has also been kidnapped. All of this is part of a carefully crafted plan constructed by the villainous Simmerling. Not only does she get to frame Bean as the mastermind behind both the robbery at the beginning and the kidnapping of the girl, she gets to make off of the robbery money alongside Mr. Grimwood, whom she plans on ransoming at a later date. And that's pretty much all the plot there is. The rest of the anime is devoted to one big chase scene followed by a climactic standoff in a dark parking garage. Now from a technical standpoint, Riding Bean looks amazing. I said before that Sonata's biggest strength is, is his attention to detail, and boy is it on full display here. Even if he is constrained by a budget, Sonata goes all out with applying the little touches, particularly when it comes to his two loves, guns and cars. They want you to know the make and model down to the dashboards and sight lines. For example, Lieutenant Percy, Bean Zenigata, his car is a perfectly modeled Shelby Cobra GT500. But the real star of the show is Bean's Roadbuster. 
it is an entirely original car with every shot of it emphasizing its speed, power, and overall sleekness. And the way it is customized with all its tricks and gadgets really shows us that this car is something special. It almost feels like we don't get to see the full spectrum of what the Roadbuster can do. It's just as much of a main character as being in Rally. The attention to detail also gets translated to the animation. Lights reflect off cars and sunglasses. When a car crashes, you see the metal crunch, windshields shatter, and tires go flying. And then there's this shot, where a hail of bullets smashes through a window, grazes the wall, and appears to kill this character. It all happens in nearly 5 seconds, but the way you can see the effects of every individual bullet destroying this wall before it hits their target is just amazing. It doesn't just apply to objects either. There's even little touches added to the character animations that really make them come to life. Take for example how Rally uses a taser to wake Bean up. He briefly flinches and then immediately goes back to sleep. Or how about this scene with the villainous Simmerling in which after she fakes a death, she removes her disguise and accidentally sets off her remaining squibs causing her to recoil in pain. It's little ticks like these that make these characters come to life. But not only are the objects and characters given special details, the setting itself has shown quite a lot of love in that department as well. Kenichi Sonata has always been a fan of American media, particularly the 1980 film Blues Brothers, and Riding Bean was not only his way of paying tribute not only to that film, but also the mean streets of Chicago itself. Sonata scouted out Chicago to get specific locales and landmarks correct for Riding Bean. Considering I'm not a resident or have even set foot in the city of Chicago, I can't fully confirm the accuracy, but it's just an example of Sonata's dedication to the little touches. Really, the little touches, whether they be in objects, characters, or settings, make all the big events more bigger. Since half of this anime is one big extended action sequence, they really make it all count with the action. The chase scenes really highlight how Bean is such a good driver, not only just with the Road Buster and, and its customization alone, but how he can actually think on his feet, even when he's incredibly angry. But the best example is in the final confrontation where we see a rally skills as a marksman and Bean's nigh instructability. I love the way this scene is shot like a monster movie from the villain's perspective. Simmerling, for all her wiles and tricks, is utterly helpless against this gorilla in a flak jacket. Everything she throws at him only just serves to piss him off. Not only does he throw a knife so hard that it, it takes off a car door, he takes a bullet to the forehead and survives getting run over by a car. This guy is street level Goku right here. The anime says he is a badass driver and shows us that he is a badass driver and more. And all this excellent action is made all the better by the soundtrack. The keyboard stylings of David Garfield combined with the soulful vocals of Phil Perry create a pulse pounding mixture of rock, blues, and soul to create the perfect tribute to American music. When you hear this play when the Roadbuster is bowling down the mean city streets, you just cannot help but pump your fists in the air. Voice acting, on the other hand. The big prize should be in the trailer. I'll unhook it. Hey, wait a sec. If the accelerator will stay put, take the wheel. Could use some work. The English distributor for this, Animago, had been in the business since the 80s, but mostly as an uncut sub-only distributor. But for Writing Bean, they decided that this was going to be one of their first dub jobs. Bear in mind, this was in 2003. By this point, other companies such as ADV and Media Blasters had already built a stable of regular voice actors and directors. Animago were just starting out, and, um, it shows. Son of a bitch! If it's come down to this, then... Now, to their credit, they do sound like they are at least trying, but for the most part, it feels like everyone is reading their lines instead of saying them. It's not held by this weird reverb effect you can hear in some lines. Well, 50 grand might be a bit steep, so it'll depend on their mood. If they think we kidnapped her or we screw up somehow, we'll just drop off the kid and split. Like, it's making me very aware that I'm listening to someone voicing being Bandit and, you know, not being Bandit. The only voice actor I would say is doing a great job is the guy playing Percy. He is playing up the crazy Zenigata angle for all it's worth, and it kind of works for the most part. Oh, Buster! 
Okay, it does sound like he's trying way too hard in some scenes, but still, give him some credit. My advice to you would just be to stick to the original Japanese, even if it is nothing special. Bean sounds gruff and approachable, Rally sounds feminine yet confident, Percy sounds maniacal, Simmerling sounds seductively venomous. It's serviceable, but nothing special. And that's really indicative of Writing Bean's biggest flaw. The characters are sorely underdeveloped. Most of this could be pinned on the fact that this is supposed to be a pilot for a potential anime series, and we just need to get the idea of who these characters are in a 45 minute runtime. Therefore, we only get the basics of who exactly these characters are. We know what Bean and Rally's job is, and we know that Bean is fiercely protective of children. We know that Bean can take a bullet point blade to the forehead and live. But we don't know Bean's past. We don't fully know his relationship with Rally. We don't know his past with Percy. We don't even know how he got the Roadbuster in the first place. Did he customize it? Did he build it from scratch? Did he steal it? The only character that does get some fleshing out is Simmerling and her partner in crime, Carrie. And all of it is just a means to show how despicable Simmerling is. Willing to murder people at the drop of a hat, stripping a female hostage naked just because she can, and probably most notably, how she treats Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets worse. It's well known that Sonata is a fan of the ambiguously aged girls who look way younger than they actually are. But Carrie here is definitely supposed to be a child. 13 at the oldest. And this is how the relationship between her and Simmerling is. <laughs> Yeah, she is a disgusting villain all around, culminating in her peak villainy when she attempts to murder Carrie for offering to pay Bean their entire ransom in exchange for Simmerling's life. So when this attempted murder results in Simmerling blowing herself up, it feels pretty good. And that's basically how the anime ends. They get the girl, they clear their names from the kidnapping, not the rest of the crimes they committed that day, and are just about to run the police once again when the screen fades to black and a so the adventure continues ending. Only the adventures didn't continue. Thanks to a falling out between Sonata and Toshiba EMI, Riding Bean only got one episode and appeared to be destined for just that. Sonata, on the other hand, did not want it to end this way and decided to make a few adjustments to the series. He decided to give them position of main character to Rally, while making her slightly younger and giving her an American Indian ancestry. Bean went from main character to Rally's rival and sometimes ally, still driving his beloved Roadbuster. Percy still appeared, trying to kill Bean instead of arrest him. And Simmerling got a huge overall, becoming taller and more intimidating as Rally's arch nemesis, Iron Goldie Musso, and thus Gunsmith Cats, was born. But even if Riding Bean was only served as a jumping off point to something more well known, it's still worth the watch? Totally! It's 45 minutes long, so things like character building have to be cut in exchange for full blown action, and the sudden ending may leave you wanting more. But the fact that the ending does make you want more shows that the anime has done its job in bringing you well animated, knockout, burnout cars and guns action. Hey, what better way to spend Valentine's Day than watching a car chase across the windy city culminating in our heroes survive a bullet to the head and a car to the torso? I am not over that. It's that awesome. That special.